5 tips on how to paint imaginary characters. Tip number 1. Have a good description of your character's physical appearance. Today I am painting Raceland from the book series Dragon Nuts. I don't know much about Raceland to begin with, and so I had to do a bit of research to know how the author described him in the books. What is his eye colour? What colour is his skin? What colour is his hair? Is his hair long? Is his hair short? Tip number two. Have a good description of a character's personality. For an appealing character painting, it's important to see the character's personality showing through. A character's personality will deeply affect his face. His personality will dictate his facial expressions and a character that normally smiles a lot, for example, will have expression wrinkles around the mouth or a character that is angry a lot will have expression wrinkles between the eyebrows or a character that just worries a lot will have expression wrinkles on the forehead. That will give a lot more depth to your character and make it look believable. If you really think about it, a character's personality will also dictate his posture. If the character has an imposing presence, he will look taller by having a straighter back, his shoulders back. If a character is depressed, his shoulders will be hunched forward and his back will be more curved. This is moving all over the place. Tip number three. Have a good grasp on your character's background story. Just like you and me, a person always has a past that influences how they are later in life. And that is the same with a believable character. What we're trying to do here is realistically portray this character. And so having a good grasp on his backstory will be very helpful in bringing the character to life. A character's background story will influence his personality and his physical appearance as we've discussed before. For example, imagine that your character was brought up in a frugal home and didn't have a lot of money throughout his life. He will have a greater tendency to wear cheaper clothing, and maybe have tears in his clothes. If he comes from royalty, he will have a cleaner look about him, well-tailored clothes, maybe a lot more colourful. Tip number four. Oh, I forgot that one know the world that this character lives in. Having a good idea of the world the character lives in will let you know what kind of dress fits that world, what kind of clothes fit that world, uh, what is his social standing, what does that social standing usually look like in that world, what they usually dress like in that world, where does your character live? Does he live in a cave, like me? Or does he live in a palace? Not like me. What time period is the story set in? That will influence the look of your character as well. What kind of races exist in this world? Is it a normal world like ours? Or is it a fantasy world where you have all sorts of different imaginary fantastical races like elves and orcs and fairies and magicians it's not a race but let's go with it uh anything that you might know about this character this world it will give a lot more depth to your painting and look like tip number four <clears throat> five knowing your character's interests and what is important to them for making a character painting uh, more detailed and to give it some more history and some more personality, you, you can add some bits here and there of things that uh, surround this character's story, things that are important to them. Um, in this case, uh, Raceland has a staff with him, which is his magical staff. You could have a person that is very attached to family or that had a loved one that passed away and you could give him, for example, and let's say that this character usually walks around with a locket with that familiar, with that family member's photograph. You could add that to the picture and add a bit more story to it. 
or imagine that uh, you have a female character that once was proposed to by someone she loved but things didn't work out and maybe she still wears that ring for emotional significance you could have her wearing that ring just small things that might not seem very important but actually give a lot more character to your painting bonus round taking all of this, these steps that I gave, now it's time to go and search for your reference pictures. It's good to have several different reference pictures to use. You could, for example, go on Pinterest or Google and search for a portrait or a selfie and select a few pictures of a model or a person that you think fit the description of the character. You can find reference photos for the clothing, for background. Past Joanna forgot to film an outro. And so I'm here to thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that it was helpful to you. And please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you in the next one.